This is a review for chapter four. So in this chapter, we learn how to sketch graphs without actually having to plot in a ton of points. And so in this video, we're gonna go through um, that whole process. And hopefully this will be a good, good review if you have an upcoming test or an upcoming final. All right, so starting with our first derivative test, our first step is to take the derivative. And when we do that, we get f prime of x. Second step, we set f prime of x equal to zero. And when we solve our x values that make our function equal to zero, we are finding our critical points. And what critical points tell us is wherever f of x, our original function, is either increasing or decreasing. To determine where f of x is increasing or decreasing, we make a table or we make a number line, and we're gonna put the critical points we just solved for on our number line, and then we're gonna plug in points within each interval of our critical points. If the interval is positive, that means that our original function, f of x, is increasing. And if our interval is negative, that means that our original function is decreasing. Okay, so let's go through this process and apply it to this problem here. So we're given this function, f of x. If we want to find the critical points, first step is take the derivative. The derivative of this function just becomes x squared uh, plus x minus 6. And now to find our critical points, we set this equal to zero, solve for x. Since we have a quadratic here, we're gonna foil it down into two binomials. And when you foil this out, this becomes x plus three and x minus two. And solving for x, we get that our critical point, or wherever, x e or wherever our function equals zero, is that x equals negative three and x equals positive two. Okay, so we found our derivative. We found the critical points by setting the derivative equal to zero. And from there, our next step is to make a table. So I draw my line, I put on my critical points, negative three and two. Now I'm gonna pick test points within each of these intervals to plug into my derivative to see what the sign of my derivative is so that I can determine whether my original function is increasing or decreasing. So over here, I can plug in, let's say x equals negative 10. In this interval, I can plug in zero. Let's make it easy. And over here, I can plug in positive 10. And remember, when I plug in these test points, I'm not worried about what the actual value of my derivative is. I'm only worried about the sign. So if I plug in negative 10, I can plug it into this factored form to make my math a little bit easier. Over here, I get negative 10 plus three. That'll be some negative number times negative 10 minus two, also some negative. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. So in this interval, my f prime of x, my derivative is positive. In the next interval, if I were to plug in zero, my f prime of x would end up being negative. And over here, if I were to plug in positive 10, let's go back to my factored form. I'll get a positive times uh, 10 minus two is also a positive. Positive times positive gives me positive. All right, so if my derivative is positive in this interval, that tells me that f of x is increasing. It's going up. If f prime is negative, my original function is decreasing. And again, over here it's positive, so f of x is increasing. All right, so that was the first derivative test. The first derivative gives us our critical points and tells us where f of x is increasing and decreasing. Moving on to our second derivative test, you might notice that it's very similar to our first derivative. Our first step is take the second derivative, which is f double prime of x. And like over here, we set our second derivative equal to zero. And when we do that and we solve for our x values, we get points called the points of inflection. And remember, points of inflection, that tells us wherever our original function, f of x, is concave up or concave down. To determine where f of x is either concave up or concave down, we are also gonna do a very similar process. We first make a table or a number line, and then we plug in points within our intervals um, between our points of inflection. If we plug in a point and the interval is positive, that tells us that f of x is concave up. If we plug in a point and we get a negative value, 
that means that our original function is concave down. So again, let's go through this process uh, with our example equation. So here's our derivative. To take the second derivative, I just take the derivative of this derivative. And I get that my f double prime of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Next step, I set this equal to 0 and solve for x. When I do that, I get that x is equal to negative 1 half. And this is my point of inflection. All right, next step to determine where my original function is concave up or concave down, I'm going to make a table, put in my point of inflection, and plug in test points on either side into my second derivative. So over here, I could plug in x equals negative 10 again. Over here, let's try 0. So when I plug in negative 10 into my second derivative, I'll get negative 20 plus 1. This is some negative value. f double prime is negative on this interval. And over here, when I plug in 0, I'll get plus 1, which is positive. And what this tells me about f of x is that since it's negative in this interval, that means that my original function is concave down, looks like this. And over here, when f double prime is positive, that means that my original function is concave up. All right, so that was the first derivative test and the second derivative test. Very similar process, except first derivative tells us critical points and where f of x is increasing and decreasing, whereas second derivative test tells us or gives us the points of inflection and tells us where f of x is concave up and concave down. If you were to go and graph this function, you'd combine all this knowledge together and just fill in what each interval looks like on your graph. Okay, um, before we, were graph we would graph it though, we would also want to look at our asymptotes. So to find the horizontal asymptotes of a function, that's just where you just solve it as the limit as x approaches infinity of our function. And if you remember, all the way back in chapter two, to find the limit as x approaches infinity, we just take the highest power in the denominator and divide every term in the entire fraction or the entire function by that leading power. If we don't have a fraction, then it's really easy to uh, find our horizontal asymptotes by just visualizing, well, if I were to plug in positive infinity into my function, what would it be doing? Or if I were to plug in negative infinity into my function, what would it be doing? All right, to find our vertical asymptotes, that's wherever f of x is undefined. So um, most of the times when you're solving for vertical asymptotes, you'll have some fraction. And in that case, you'll set the denominator equal to 0. Because remember, you can never divide by 0. So whenever your denominator is equal to 0, that's where your function is undefined. That's where you'll have a vertical asymptote. OK, last thing we're going to go through is finding our mins and maxes. There's a couple ways you can find the min and maxes um, of a function. One way is we could look at our first derivative and say, well, if it's going from increasing to decreasing, so it's increasing to decreasing, that means that this critical point right here must be a max because our function is going from increasing to decreasing. Over here, if our function is going from decreasing to increasing, that means that this critical point must be a min. So we could look for our mins and maxes this way, or we could use our second derivative test to find our local mins and maxes. If we were to do this method, we would plug our critical point that we got from our first derivative into our second derivative. If we plug in our critical points and we get a positive value, that means that that critical point is a min. If we plug in our critical point and we get a negative value, that means that that critical point is a max. And if we plug it in and we get zero, that tells us to go back and do more work. That means that our second derivative test failed. We'd have to determine whether that point was a min or max some other way, maybe by looking at the first derivative. So applying this to our function here that we had, um, our critical points were at x equals negative 3 and positive 2. And our second derivative was the function 2x plus 1. So to determine whether these are mins or maxes using my second derivative, I would plug in negative 3, oops, negative 3 into my second derivative. And when I do that, I'll get negative 6 plus 1. I'll get some negative value. Going to my chart, if I get a negative, that tells me 
that that critical point, negative 3, is a max. And if I were to plug in positive 2 into my second derivative, f double prime of positive 2, I would get 4 plus 1. That will give me positive. And my chart tells me that if I get a positive, that means that that critical point, x equals 2, is a minimum. And this is what we would expect because we can verify it using our first derivative. Okay, so this was a pretty good review over most of Chapter 4. Don't forget, though, there's also some fun word problems at the end uh, that you'll also want to review. If you want more clarification or uh, more explanation on how to do any of these parts, there's also videos for each section, uh, including word problems. And if you have any more specific questions, remember we have our tutoring center, first floor of Sid Rich. Come by whenever we're open, and we'll have calculus tutors. Good luck on your test. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.